Okay, we're ready to start. And um, first, uh, I want to acknowledge that the land in which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nation. And tonight's public meeting is to hear comments, questions, or concerns on the following applications. Um, Councillor Bernard will not be attending. He has a previous commitment. And I believe Councillor Duran Jason is calling in. He's running a little behind, but he's calling in. Yeah. Okay, we have three applications. 68 Royalty Road, staff member is Michael Fraser, uh, presenter, owner is Maverick Developments, and Nick McGregor. Uh, nope, 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street. Staff will be Laurel Palmer Thompson. And we have the APM commercial team here, Kane Arsenault and I think that's only you, Kane, here presenting. Will anybody else be presented with you? Mr. Mr. Banks will be presenting too, and uh, Mr. Palmer, or just the two of them. Okay. Now we have 115 Deacon Lane. We have Laurel Palmer Thompson again, and we have the province of Prince Edward Island. And I see Bill Saul here from Sable Arc, so he'll be probably. So. While we're back uh, to in-person meetings at this time, residents still have the option to participate via conference, call if they prefer. The, media, the meeting is also live streamed on YouTube and a recording of this meeting can be asset, assessed after the meeting by just going to the video link, shellatown.ca forward slash video. Now you may find it get a little warm here tonight because we have a lot of persons in the- I can't hear you in the back. Can't hear me? No. Can you hear me now? No. Okay. Well, I only went through the preliminaries, so we're not into the meat and potatoes of the uh, applications. That'll be coming very shortly. So, um, myself, Philip Brown, and uh, I have the Deputy Mayor, Lana Yankoff. As he said, Councillor Bob Duran will be calling in. Uh, Councillor John McAleer. Councillor Julie McCabe. Councillor Justin Matert, Councillor Kevin Ramsey, Councillor Mitchell Tweel, Councillor Norman Beck, uh, Councillor De Terry Bernard will not be here because of a previous commitment, and Councillor Trevor McKinnon. I see one planning board uh, member, uh, Rosemary Herbert. She's down there. I don't see any other members. Um, the, uh, Rosemary is a resident member of our planning board. And I want to thank residents who may be in, uh, joining us by a conference call. Um, so, Deputy, just before I get going, I want to under call to order. Uh, this evening, I was out to the new Tremploy facility, which is in the West Royal Industrial Park. Um, you have to get out to see it. It's a beautiful facility for our, our uh, persons with disabilities. Um, the staff are very welcoming. It's overlooks the North River, the York River. Um, so hopefully we'll be going to the great grand opening in the, the new year. So I have to ask, uh, and are, are there any declarations of conflict of interest? No declarations. So it sounds like they can't raise the volume. Yes. So but if you're having trouble hearing, you could sit out in the lobby and watch the TV where it could be louder. So if you can't hear me, um, you can go out into the foyer. We have a a uh, flat screen TV there with a um, system that has turned up to allow. Um, close as I can unless I bite it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Deputy, can you remember that too? We'll be close to the mic. So, any declarations of conflict of interest amongst? No. On the agenda, we have the three items. I already listed those three agenda items. Uh, 68 Royalty Road, 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street, 115 Deacon Lane. And now I will call the Deputy Mayor Yankov to briefly go over the order of events. Get close to the mic. Speak loud. You're on. <laughs> okay. 
Yes, yeah, th thank you, Your Worship, and and uh, welcome everyone here this evening for our um, <clears throat> for our meeting. And um, most of you are probably familiar with these um, these public meetings, but I will just you know briefly just go over with you that um, the presentations will be presented by staff and the applicants. And after the presentation, then you folks will be given an opportunity to speak. Um, and each of you are provided with five minutes in which um, to provide comments or ask any questions. Um, we always start with the members of the public in the room first before we move on to those that are phoning in, if there's any. And uh, council members will be allowed to ask questions of clarity. Um, but just remembering that we're not here tonight as councillors to give opinions on the project. We're just here to, um, to uh, listen as part of the process. You're also going to notice a little glitch in our system. Every 45 minutes, you're going to hear the conference call reminder that beeps and does a few other annoying things. Just ignore it because it's being fixed. Um, and the I just you know ask everyone, we all know this anyways, that we respect in each other and we respect the decorum that we're here in the chamber and uh, just refrain from unmuting your devices when others are speaking and and uh, other than that, just a reminder as well that um, besides speaking this evening, you have um, until Wednesday, November the 28th at noon, which is tomorrow, to also submit any additional um, comments that you would like to to uh, um, send along. Other than that, thank you again for coming, and I'll turn things back over to His Worship. And Deputy Mayor Yankoff, I know tomorrow is 12 noon, but if written submissions arrive after tomorrow, they're just considered as late submissions, correct? That's correct. Okay, so Laurel, can we go with you first? Uh, um, I'm online here. Uh, Mayor and Mayor. we have Councillor Duran online. Uh, Councillor Duran, just please remember to um, mute your phone while you're listening. Sure, thank, thank you. you. So, sorry, Michael Frazier is first, I think, with 68 Royalty Road. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Michael. Make sure everyone can hear me before I get going. Can you hear him back there? Okay. Good. Awesome. Uh, good evening, Your Worship, members of Council, and ladies and gentlemen of the public. I'm here to present a request at 68 Royalty Road, PID number 145714. This is a request to amend Appendix A of the future land use map of the City of Charlottetown from industrial to medium density residential, and amend uh, Appendix G, zoning map of the City of Charlottetown zoning and development bylaw from light industrial M1 zone to medium density residential R3 zone. This request is being sought uh, to allow for a proposed multi-residential, multi-unit residential development consisting of a mix of townhouse and apartment dwelling units clustered on the same site. This property is inset from the corner of Royalty Road and Alderwood uh, Avenue. The site is currently zoned as light industrial M1. The current use is vacant. It is a wooded lot currently. The lot size is roughly 7,834 square meters. And the frontage has a short frontage on Royalty Road of 11.4 meters and a frontage on Alderwood Avenue that's longer at 102.1 meters. Oh, back one. Oh, next one then. Sorry, my slides are slightly out of order there. <coughs> Try the next one. Okay. Oh, go back. Sorry, yeah. There you go. Um, the immediate surroundings of the site uh, is predominantly residential, though there is an industrial development that can be found to the east. A T3 transit stop is located at the corner of Alderwood Avenue and Royalty Road. The zoning context surrounding the site includes several residential districts and the aforementioned industrial district. Zoning adjacent to the site includes R2S, R1L, and R1S, and in, the, in a one kilometer radius around the site, R2, R3, and open space zones can be found. 
In accordance with Section 3.10.4, Amendments to the Bylaw and Rezoning of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, on November 14th, City Council approved the request to proceed to public consultation. On November 20th, 2023, written notification was sent to the owners located within 100 meters of the subject property. 54 letters were sent to residents advising of them of this public meeting and requested their written comments. To date, one letter of opposition and one in support have been received, though I just had a conversation uh, a moment ago that there are one that has been forwarded to me uh, today, just before the meeting. There is a larger uh, photo of the development that I'll put at the end of the presentation. The development proposed uh, that has been, uh, the, in addition to this rezoning application, this uh, application has included a site plan. The site plan proposes nine townhouse dwelling units near the property line with Alderwood Avenue, two apartment buildings in the interior of the site, and parking that is required for the apartment uses located near the industrial adjacent parcel. Townhouse units would have driveways off Alderwood Avenue, and the apartment units would use uh, parking that is adjacent to them to the uh, east of the parcel, and would have two access points, one from Royalty Road and one from Alderwood Avenue. And if you go to the next slide, perfect. This is a larger scale of the submitted uh, site plan. Um, you can see that Alderwood Avenue has those townhouse units um, with driveways accessing them. There's a common open park space in the center of the site. Two apartment buildings inset from the site with a buffer of the townhouse dwelling units and then parking at the rear, uh, parking at the rear from Alderwood Avenue. Um, a slight correction to what was previously mentioned. I have Dave Morris here to present about the proposal additionally. Um, he has a separate slideshow that will be presented now. And Jason, if you could put up the other Alder, uh, 86 presentation. Jason, can you just give your name and... Uh, my name's Dave Morris. Uh, Sorry. I represent the developing here. My name is Dave Morris. I represent developer Maverick Developments, Inc. To, for the rezoning of uh, 68 Royalty Road. I guess I'm going to hold it. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, I represent Maverick Developments, which is looking to uh, develop uh, 68 Royalty Road and is making application for a, a rezoning uh, permit uh, to uh, R3. Uh, the property is currently zoned. Uh, next slide. The property is currently zoned light industrial M1 and has a number of permitted uses under the current zoning, which include an auto body shop, heavy equipment repair, light manufacturing, and a storage facility. If the property was to be sub subdivided into separate lots un under the M1, the, the lots would have to be 800 square meters in size with 20 meter frontage on Alder, Alder um, Alderwood Drive. The current use of the land is undeveloped and vacant woodland. Uh, the de development objectives of Maverick Development is to develop the lands into a residential community, uh, to obtain the, the approval to rezone the lands from light industrial M1 to medium residential R3, and to enter into a development agreement to develop the residential community as a mix of townhouse units and apartment units on one lot as a, as a vacant land condominium. The vacant land condominium will be comprised of one four-unit two-story townhouse, one five-unit two-story townhouse, and two 24-unit <coughs> apartment buildings. When developed, the property will 
comprise 58 units in a group dwelling configuration with grass common areas. There will be six meters separation between buildings that will act as a buffer between each. The townhouse units on Alderwood Drive are to act as a buffer between the higher density apartment units situated to, towards the rear of the lot. That, would, that, that, that will consist of two three-story 24-unit apartment buildings. There will be a landscape buffer to the adjacent lots as required. Uh, this is uh, the potential townhouse units that are looking to be built on the, on the property. However, they will be confirmed during the, the design phase. And then potential uh, apartment building to be built on the site. Uh, the current industrial zoning is an anomaly in the area with a mix of single and semi-detached buildings. The proposed R3 zoning and layout presented provides for a step density adjacent to the current industrial operations. The vacant land condominium with the building separation of six meters reduces the building massing and provides for the optimal land use and green space of, of the development. The apartments are finally uh, provided with two accesses to reduce traffic to Alderwood and for fire protection. And that is, I am ready, for, open to questions. Thank you, sir. So that's it, Michael, for you? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, we're gonna open the floor up for questions. You just have to leave the uh, unit there. <laughs> Your Worship, I just have a question of oh, uh, Michael, mm -hmm. can you just ask the developer to come back up? So yeah. is this is this are you Nick McGregor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Nick, and who was the other? Dave Morris. Dave Morris. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Council I, I'm just don't. I, I it's a new term for me, vacant land condominium. I'm not sure what. You refer what that refers to. Okay. I've never heard that. I didn't see that term before. Michael or Laurel, can you uh, answer that? It's a technical question. Vacant land condominium or bare land condominium? I okay. thought it said vacant land condominium. So I believe. I mean, we the city doesn't administer the condominium act. Um, that's administered through the province, but in my experience, when a developer is dealing with a vacant or bare land condominium, it means that it's um, one property owned by a condominium corporation, so that each person would um, buy into the development and they would each own a portion of the um, the property, much like a condominium if you were to purchase um, a unit in a building that was on one piece of property. Councillor, you want to so clarify those, that? those, or is that with regards to those townhouses that are fronting in Alderwood? Are those all vacant land condominiums? Is that the concept that's being proposed? Correct. Okay. It's the entire lot as one parcel, and everyone would basically be a part of the condominium corporation, all of the dwellings. Yeah. So, so Nick, you're selling each one of them, right, as condos, correct? Selling you're or renting, unsure at this point. Well, a condo is that you have to sell it, and then you become a, you get a paid number for that, correct? It'll be set up so they're potentially each each unit of each townhouse can be sold, and each unit in each apartment building can be sold. Correct. So that in there'd be probably there would probably be sub condos of the larger condo corporation because you eat so. One, uh, each apartment building is on its own unit, and then they can be broken into further units inside. But everything will be under the one PID, and then- As, you, as you sell them, you can get- There'll, there'll be, be PIDs. PIDs for every, for the, yeah. There'll be 58 PIDs plus the main PID. Okay. Yeah. Property identification numbers for yeah. tax purposes. Okay. Nick, did you want to give any more information? Okay. Councillor Twill. <clears throat> Yeah, I have a question for Mr. Morris. Um, in your uh, slide presentation, 
I haven't noticed any uh, park dedication. The system has detected that a few lines are still connected to the conference and will attempt to disconnect them. If you wish to remain in the conference, please press star 1. 15. Yeah. Thank so, you. So um, we're in 2023 and we're still doing that. Uh, Councillor Drawn, are you still there? Still here, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So um, thank, you. thank you for your presentation. But I, I haven't noticed um, or I haven't seen any illustrations of uh, parkland dedication. So my question begins with, uh, have you had any dialogue or any consultation with the Parks and Recreation Department? And secondly, if you did, uh, can you show me where uh, there's uh, parkland dedication? I think 10% is the criteria uh, when it comes to the zoning and development bylaw, and that's something I'm very interested in. So, David, just before you answer that, Laurel, can you answer that? Is Are we subdividing this land? No. No. Yes, Your Worship, um, I can answer that. Um, the land is not proposed to be subdivided, therefore there isn't a requirement for 10% parkland. So, David, you don't have to uh, answer it. I can it. still answer the question. You yeah, so for the condominium corporation, we have to provide so much common area. So on the plan between the townhouses, there is a common open up common park space for the condominium corporation. There's, there is park space? Yeah. Can you show that to me, please? Uh, yeah, bring up. Uh, uh, probably go to the second plan. Page 46. The top slide on the screen there. You guys have the. Oh, go, go to the next one down. Or up. There it is. So where you see there, there's there's uh, over over 10 percent of of the property is set aside as common space between the two two sets of buildings. But but there is no. But that uh, is for the condominium corporation, not for the public. Not for the public. Um, yeah, so it's green space in between the buildings, but there's no um, dedicated parkland per se. No, because we're not subdividing. It's not required. Oh, okay. Can we run? Thank you, David. We're just going to open it up to the public, um, and I know council can ask question, more questions after. And again, please, if you use the mic, just put it up close to your mouth so all of us can hear you. And all you have to do is give your name and... Don't have to give you your, ad your address, just Charlottetown, Rusty Co, wherever. My name is Glenn Pye. I'm in a uh, resident of the area. I do apologize for my uh, sinus issues. I'm just coming back off of a very nasty sinus infection. Uh, my question concerns the traffic flow in the area. The Royalty Road, Upton Road area has become somewhat of a uh, miniature bypass for people coming from the Cornwall area. We've seen a massive, massive increase in the number of vehicles using that road. It is currently, uh, I believe, a 50 kilometer an hour zone. I have personally clocked people going through there in excess of 80, 90 kilometers an hour at all hours of the day and night. I am concerned that the bus stop to which they referred to is on the opposite side of both Royalty Road. There is one there and there is one on the opposite side of Alderwood. The entrance to the apartments uh, after the townhouses is coming at the bottom of a curved blind hill which gets extremely slippery in the wintertime. It has already washed out a number of years. I've been living in this area for almost 10 years now and it has washed out almost every winter since then. So there's that issue that needs to be dealt with. The green space between the development on, I believe it's Parkway and that road is also a high tension power line. I didn't see that included in the drawing. The community mailbox for our area is located smack dab where unit number nine of the townhouses has their driveway. This area has seen a massive increase over the last number of years. 
there's probably 200 to 300 units plus in single family residential that have gone up in the area and construction is still going full bore in that area. There has been no, absolutely zero upgrades to the infrastructure system in that area. I've been in this area for almost 30 years when I moved out there. I lived in the mini home park down by the jail. I've worked, lived on the other side of uh, Lower Malpec Road and now I'm here. When I first moved out, there was nothing. Bell Heights wasn't even built at the time. So I am certainly not anti-development by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a construction worker myself and I have previously worked for the Construction Association. I agree, we need housing, we need the development, absolutely. But this is the wrong area, in my opinion, to put an apartment building. There are better areas, better suited, to development and to support the infrastructure, some of them extremely close. The site of the old tourist motel just off of the Malpec Road would be a beautiful spot. Lots of room there. There's several other uh, parcels of land a little bit down the lower Malpec Road. Currently they are under use as uh, agricultural land. Move a little further out the Lower Malpec Road. There's a lot more development out there. Sorry, a lot more room for development out there. I am not anti-development and I certainly don't have anything personally against Maverick Developments, but I think this is a wrong call for this area. We have many, many young families and kids on bikes and so on and so forth in the summertime. You could, if anybody was happened to come out in that area, you would see it. For anybody to think that a townhouse is going to have one car, I think they're fooling themselves. Two 24-unit apartment buildings, do you think those people are going to have one car alone? So we're looking at nearly 60 units. Most of them will have at least one car. I would say primarily more of them will have more. You're talking about another 100 cars on that road system in there. Again, with zero infrastructure development. I know I've talked to uh, Councillor uh, McKinnon here, and he has talked about putting a uh, stop sign at the corner of Alderwood and Royalty, or potentially down on Alderwood and Meadow Lane, I believe it is. That would be a start in slowing things down. I'm not a big fan of stop signs, but if it helps, it helps. But again, that road system was designed 50 some odd years ago when this whole area was nothing but cow fields. As a matter of fact, the area on the opposite side of Royalty Road where this is being was a cow field until two years ago. I just don't think enough planning has been put into the infrastructure to support a development of this size. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Hello, Della. I'm the listing realtor for this property, Della Park. Della, Della, just for the record, can oh, you just, give, just give your name and I know it's... Oh, yeah, Della Parker. <laughs> Charlotte, I Charlotte. Think you can hear that. Charlottetown? Yeah, yeah. Char yeah. Okay. for sure. Um, just to give a bit of history, uh, we had one offer before this offer came in and it was for a place of worship and it's a thousand person congregation. And it's a use that's already approved under the current M1 uh, zoning. It failed only because they couldn't get financing <clears throat> within the time, excuse me, I have a throat thing, but um, they couldn't get financing within the determined time, but they say they will be back if they can secure financing. And if this development fails, um, it will be back on the market again uh, with this particular buyer. It continues to be offered for sale on the MLS and numerous sites um, across Canada and uh, elsewhere. Um, this particular developer is the first one when we got, like I received probably about a dozen calls. Um, can you put residential on this property? And as you know, the M1 specifically excludes residential development. So the answer was no, that's right in the listing, and it says no residential development. Okay, I'm out of here. So 
that was, you know, people who wanted to build homes or whatever they wanted to build. Um, the other ones, when we told them you can go, to, you know, try rezoning, try your application, it's online, you know, the city invites you to, you know, do that. None of them had the stomach for it. So they said, no, we're not spending the money, we're not going to, you know, we'll still let somebody else try it and see whether they get through it or, or where, where it goes. Um, another thing, just the one last thing that I want to say in the history of, of what we've uh, received uh, throughout the listing, which has been on the market, by the way, for over a year. Um, that's the one offer we received in writing. Um, this is the second offer that we accepted. Um, there is another buyer that should this one fail, they're going to take advantage of the M1 uh, zoning and it's an approved use that's under there now. And um, if they don't like the traffic, perhaps that's going to come from this development or you know whatever goes on there, they very well might not like the approved use that this next buyer has in mind. Like I said, it's approved on, on under this zoning. Um, the last thing I want to mention is the current owner owns Atlantic Enterprise. They've been there since the 60s. They've been good corporate clients, customers, and, and citizens of Charlottetown. Um, they bought the place in the 60s, like I said. The owner himself, if you've seen the map there, you'll see that residential yellow block that's on royalty there. That's where he lives. So he's continuing to live in that home, run his business next door, uh, since the 60s, and this vacant land is part of his retirement package. He wants to move on. He wants it to be put to some kind of use. He is in favor, obviously, of a residential rezoning, or else you know he wouldn't have uh, asked, you know, signed for the application. And he wants to um, have some use that Charlottetown can put this land to. That's the highest and best use, as they say in uh, the world of real estate. And we feel, given everything that's around there, that's a residential use. Whatever council decides, obviously, uh, is, is their uh, you know, right. And we just want to give some input and some context to what's been happening with that property. Thank you very much. Thank you, Della. Again, just give your name. No, no, just come up, give your name and uh, where you live, yeah. the mic. That's it. Just take the mic there. Sure. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Thank you. My name is Jim Randall. Okay, Jim. I've lived in the neighborhood for almost three years now. Um, I guess I just want to speak for a few moments, maybe in support of uh, of Glenn's comments here. Uh, to me, this is an issue of safety, uh, the infrastructure. Right now, and and the drawings don't don't show the grade and the danger there. I drove from here out of the neighborhood. There's hardly any lighting there whatsoever. Uh, the grade comes down on Alderwood. Um, pedestrians go down to the super mailbox. They walk their dogs. People walk down to the uh, the transit stop there, and it's dangerous right now. Uh, and uh, so I'm not necessarily opposed to the residences going there, especially given the potential other uses that might go in there. Uh, we think of this as being just a force, and it'd be great if it was left as a force, but that's that's not the reality. It likely will be sold, and it'll be changed to another use. So I'd probably prefer a use such as this than another industrial use or one with higher traffic. But I, I'm, I'm concerned right now about the safety of pedestrians and others there and what it would be if... Uh, any kind of development was put in there. At the very least, there needs to be a sidewalk put in from the corner of Royalty all the way up to uh, Parkway Drive, uh, and much better lighting, because this is an accident just waiting to happen. It's going to be a tragic accident for one or more pedestrians there. Thank you. I know the area, Mr. Randall. I was campaigning there last year in late October, and I was in that area, and it is dark and not wide, and then Essex Crescent flows right into it. Okay, just please come up, state your name, where you live, 
East Royalty, West Royalty. Hello. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a issue as well with my sinuses. So must um, be going on. Out there, it is. is. It? It's in the it's in the development. Um, <laughs> my name's Rajan Pollen, and I've been a resident of that area for 16 years. Uh, I'm very much in support of what Glenn has spoken about. And the other thing I just really want to bring up is if anyone has ever gone down Upton Road and uh, see Endaris Lane, which is all townhouses, I believe there's 10 with four units. Cars are along there um, because there's not enough parking. There's many people living in each of the townhouses and uh, they park on the side of the road. So I feel the same is going to happen with the nine units that are proposed. There's going to be cars all along there, which again is going to be a safety problem for the kids who bike down to the sidewalk to get to West Royalty School, people walking down to get their mail, walking their dogs. It's a very you know popular area for lots of activity outside, walking and stuff like that. So. Um, and Daris, and also uh, with Essex now, uh, there's cars parked along there all day long. Um, probably, you know, 20, 30 cars on any given day. So that's my concern is uh, tra the cars there, people trying to back out, people trying to get up to, you know, up to Park, uh, Parkway Drive, and just a safety concern. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. Okay, look, we got a real mic. Let's try it and give the other mic to uh, test, test, test. Oh, look at that. That's got to stay close to the map of that And can you turn it up a little bit? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. So we've upped our technology for the mic. So if you please just again give your name, where you live. Well, just in the interim, are there any questions from council uh, regarding the, as the deputy said, it's questions for clarification, correct, deputy? The deputy, Deputy Mary Yankoff, is the chair of the Planning Board Development and Heritage. So, Councillor Twill? Yeah, my, my question is, um, some of the concerns that were expressed here tonight with regards to uh, the infrastructure, how dangerous it is, safety, uh, speeding traffic, not much lighting, cars parked on the side of the road. Um, have any of these is issues, and, and I don't know, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not in that area, uh, but have, have any of these issues come to the forefront of the respective departments, for example, police department, uh, the Public Works Department and other relevant departments to to address some of the concerns of the residents here tonight. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, we've never discussed them at council. We've never discussed them at uh, Public Works. The short time I've been on Public Works, I have never heard them being expressed. And 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 my question is, have 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 your concerns been brought forward to the respective departments? so that uh, there can be an implementation plan and to be able to address uh, some of the infrastructure and some of the amenities that uh, these, these folks are talking about. And, and the other question I have is for, for Della Parker is, you know, if this project fails to get approval from council, and you mentioned industrial, and you mentioned traffic that the residents, paraphrasing, might not be keen on, can, can you elaborate on what type of traffic you're talking about? Are you talking about heavy industrial vehicle traffic? Is Della, that, is that Della, what you're talking about, yeah, Della? Just De Della, 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 just one second. Let's just get the first question. I know the councillor from the area, Councillor Trevor McKinnon. Did you want to address his concern? Then Della, we'll have you come back up. Yeah. Councillor Trent McKinnon, have you heard these concerns? I have, um, Your Worship, and thank you for your question, Councillor Twill. I've heard it from uh, several residents, and Darius Lane, Essex Drive, and uh, Upton Road are all concerns with traffic. They have been passed on to city police and public works, and I just picked up um, some flyers today, and city police are going to be handing them out to 
the residents to let them know about the uh, overnight parking bylaw that's in place for uh, snow removal during the winter season. Okay. Um, can I yeah, have a yeah, just, just, can we get Della's question then? No, uh, can I come back to Mr. McKenna well, no, first? Councilor Tweed, this is a public meeting to get public input. Well, I'm um, trying to get but, an understanding. But you can there. bring these questions up in council when the application oh, comes to the you floor. you asked if we could ask questions. Yeah, And now okay. you're saying I can't ask questions. Not the, the questions that okay, we're looking Mr. for. Mayor, have it your way. Della, did you want to answer a second question? Yes, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Just grab that mic. Yep, for sure. So in the case of a place of worship, which is already an approved uh, use, this particular um, uh, religion would be building a church that would hold a thousand person congregation, subject of course to a building permit. And also it's not like the old days where only a, a place of worship was used on Sunday. Now this place of worship would be used as a wedding venue. It would be a place to gather for different festivals, um, celebrating different days of the year. There could potentially be daycares run out of the church basement, the usual suppers, all that kind of thing. So you're gonna have traffic perhaps there uh, seven days a week. So that's what I mean in the place of worship. The other one, which is a use I'm not at liberty to disclose, um, which is one, it definitely would be uh, light industrial. Uh, there would be comings and goings, uh, not in the evening because they're generally secure in the evening uh, after dark, but all day long there would be comings and goings of both truck traffic and uh, car traffic. Thank you, Della. Anything? Thank you. Yeah. Glenn, did you want to follow up with, I, I saw your head nodding. Did, and Glenn, just use the, the small mic. That, that other mic, I, I, I can't hear. You, yeah, that's much better. All right. Uh, in response to uh, Councillor Tweel's comment, I have called planning uh, probably at least six times over the last nine years to talk about that area. Lack of lighting. I have asked for speed bumps to be put in there. Um, Councillor McKinnon's predecessor um, knew my voice on the phone. I was on his ear so often talking about uh, issues in that area. So did it get its way to the planning department? Did it get its way to this council, this chamber? I can't answer that question, but I do know for a fact that I have called and I have made those complaints known. I haven't done it honestly in the last two, maybe three years. COVID certainly slowed a lot of things down. Didn't think it was really all that, that necessary, but absolutely, these things have been brought uh, up in the past. And I just would like also to say, Your Worship, I don't particularly um, respond well to Ms. Parker's veiled threats that we wouldn't like what's coming down the road. The boogeyman behind the door is not really a great tactic for people. It only makes us want to fight harder against this sort of thing. You're not anti-development, anti this type of development without the infrastructure to back it up. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Yes, I know, I, I know that, but I invited him back up because of uh, clarification for the question that was asked. So, Councilor McKinnon, again, you're going to follow up with the issues that were brought to the floor tonight. Uh, yes, Your Worship. I'll, um, I've been making notes here. I will be bringing uh, this issue forward. I'll be speaking to the planning department. And we didn't um, make mention that there is a four-way stop coming down on Royalty Road, corner of Paddington and Upton Road as well. So that will slow down some of the traffic coming coming down there. So thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. Deputy, do you want to move on to the next one? Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, David. We're just going to move to the next uh, item is 199 Grafton Street, 156 Prince Street. Laurel Palmer Thompson will introduce the project and APM Commercial is Kane Arsenal, Kane Arsenal and Mr. Banks. Okay, Laurel.
first one, mine. Uh, turn on your mic. <laughs> Sorry, we're having tef technical <laughs> difficulties tonight. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council, ladies and gentlemen of the public. Um, this is a request at 199 Grafton Street, PID number 342-790, um, for a site-specific exemption to Section 30.2 regulations for permitted uses and Section 30.3 bonus height development standards in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone of the Zoning and Development Bylaw. So the property details, the property is located in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone in the 500 lot area, and it's bounded to the north by Clark Street, to the east by Hillsborough Street, and to the south by the Polyclinic building, building and Grafton Street, and to the west by Prince Street. So details of the request, um, specifically the request is to amend Appendix C, um, which is approved site-specific exemptions um, in the Zoning and Development Bylaw as per Section 3.11. Um, the um, the bylaw is to exempt um, 199 Grafton Street from Section 30.2 regulations for permitted uses in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone and Section 30.3 bonus height development standards in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone. And that's in order to allow an eight-story, 158-unit apartment building with parking located within and under the building on the vacant property at 199 Grafton Street. So under this site-specific exemption, there, is, uh, there are two variance uh, requests. And um, one is um, a height variance to eight stories above um, already approved bonus height. The previous approval was in 2021, and it granted an overall height of 70.4 feet. The current request is to increase the height to approximately 88 feet. Um, therefore, um, it requires an approval to increase the height to an additional 17.6 feet over what was already approved. There is also a variance to the requirement of section 30.3.23 to not step back the building on the 7th and 8th stories to the 45 degree angular plane. So le legislative requirements, in accordance with section 3.104, amendments to the Zoning and Development Bylaw, on November 13th, um, City Council approved the request to proceed to public consultation. On November 20th, um, written notification was sent to property owners located with 100 meters of the subject property. In total, um, 68 letters were sent to residents. And um, we advise them of the public meeting, but we, um, to date, we have not received any um, written responses. Um, time for written responses is up tomorrow following the public meeting. And I will turn the um, presentation over to Mr. Tim Banks, who is the developer for the project. Mr. Banks, just grab, grab the mic there, sir, the little mic. Yeah, don't use that one, that's not good. That bike doesn't work. It's the other one. <laughs> We're a smart chamber. You have to hold it right up. We want to hear everything you say. There's an alligator clip there. If anyone wants to clip it to their lapel as it's supposed to, yeah. it'll uh, perform as required. Okay. Nice and close to your collar. Is that working there? No. Just hold it. Okay. Okay, Mr. Banks. Working there now. Okay. I can hear. Is that working there now? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council, for uh, um, hearing us out on this meeting here this evening. 
Um, some are, of you are new to council, uh, so I'd like to just do a little bit of history on uh, this particular site. Um, our original application to develop the property was submitted to the city in December of 2020. Uh, so with the follow-up meeting to this, it'll be three years before uh, we'll get a permit. Uh, the, the issue really boiled down to uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, the original building was six stories. Uh, um, it was proposed at 84 units. Um, there was an appeal that uh, took place. Um, that appeal was uh, immediately after the uh, permit was issued. Uh, the appellant uh, asked for an extension on the appeal so that uh, Mr. Maddy, uh, who was her consultant, um, would be time to, uh, to give a report. Uh, the final decision uh, to proceed with the project came down on October 4th of 222, so approximately 21 months after we applied for the permit, we got a we got the opportunity to proceed with the project. A lot of things happened between there, and what I should point out that uh, we have a lot of experience at uh, developing uh, properties. During the pandemic, uh, we built uh, 296 apartments uh, here in the island, 101 of which was built in the uh, city of Charlottetown. Uh, today we have uh, currently under contract to build, uh, without these 158, we have 319 um, units to build, 168 which are uh, sponsored by the province as affordable units, uh, which will all rent for under $900. Uh, of the 296 we built during the pandemic, 101 of them were sponsored by the province. And the uh, rental rates for the new product was in the $900 range. Um, the issue with this particular project is economics. Um, we've done everything we can to try to get the project back on track. Uh, we've uh, reduced the uh, sizes of the units uh, to uh, be smaller in, in scale. Um, we, we know the market will sustain that. We've had the experience of that with our 23 unit on Richmond Street. We have a big uptake on those units. They're very small. Uh, we have a big waiting list for them. Uh, so we believe that will uh, certainly work in, in, on that site. Um, so one of the things about the appeal is the, uh, the, the appellant uh, took in the consultant who had developed the original 500 lots, Mr. Maddy, who was an architect, who had, uh, uh, and I'd like to submit the, the uh, ruling by IRAC, which will clearly tell you that Mr. Maddy had testified that the, that the, um, he was uh, against the project. Uh, the interpretation of the uh, bylaws by Iraq was that it was a legitimate project. It was contemporary and met all the requirements within the rules. And uh, that's on a public record and you, you can read it. Uh, the only uh, change here, and if I could start through my presentation here to, to quickly talk about it. Uh, Okay, forward and back, okay. Uh, most of this stuff will be online tomorrow through, through APM if you want to uh, look at it and read it uh, and, and go through it. Um, basically, the, the project uh, is on the same footprint as the original project. There's absolutely nothing has changed. Uh, everything that we had agreed to, to do in terms of putting brick on the side of it on Clark Street and stepping it back another foot or two. All that has taken place. 
Um, the building on the streetscape from Prince Street, and uh, there's a bit of confusion here, the building is already set back from the street about 28 feet and 18 feet from the property line. And that first brick section you have there is actually 18 feet away from the back of the building. So there is already a step back on the building. Uh, this is the various elevations of the building. The uh, treatment of the uh, brick and the siding and so on is as per the original uh, design. Nothing has changed. Um, and in the report on the original design reviewer, uh, Mr. Fellows of Fellows and Company from Fredericton, who has a lot of experience in, in uh, heritage zone and in urban buildings, um, he points out that it's a very good project. I'm going to leave a copy of that report here so council can see it all. Um, the elevation treatments are upscale, rich, very contemporary, urban design. Um, in this new proposal, we're bringing 32 affordable units to the 158 that is going to be built in the building. Um, the um, building uh, contains three levels of uh, parking. One is underground, two is above ground. Uh, you'll notice in the, uh, to the left of the building is where the elevators are in the building. Um, and that's the uh, second floor space. And the, th or, uh, sorry, that was the ground floor. Uh, this was the lower level. And uh, that's the upper level in the parking. All these drawings will be online. Um, these are the layouts of the units, and they'll be online to look at. The roof terrace uh, is maintained. Um, this is the, uh, the design review uh, Mr. Fellows retired. Uh, this is a new uh, independent architect that uh, the city brought in. Uh, a couple of things that uh, he suggested is uh, up in the top left-hand corner, uh, he wants to uh, remove that corner of the building or otherwise he wants to put the building to six floors and add to the back of the building, which would eliminate uh, roughly 28 uh, apartments. And the trade-off, the other design reviewer, uh, Mr. Fellows, uh, believed that the building shouldn't be brought all the way back to Hillsborough Street. He thought that a two-story elevation on that streetscape was more appropriate. This guy obviously had a different view. Uh, the other thing I think that this architect missed is that the setback of the building uh, is already 18 feet from the street. Uh, and in the original design reviews report, he highlighted, uh, and we'll, we'll see that here in a moment, um, uh, he highlighted that the step backs, the designer has done a good job, uh, and it's the same building. Um, and this will be all up online uh, tomorrow for everyone to read. Uh, and the original uh, design reviewer thought it was a great project, couldn't find any fault with it, thought the development uh, was very contemporary for the area, fit well in the 500 lot zoning. Uh, that was uh, completely confirmed by IRAC uh, in their decision. And uh, uh, now, this building here is on Richmond Street. It's 23 units. It took us five years from the day we applied to actually put occupancy in the building. Um, investment is very important in our city. Uh, Here's a situation where we built fences around to deal with our, our um, garbage. And lo and behold, uh, you know, people broke into it uh, less than three weeks ago and went in and lit our storage building on fire. Uh, so 
This building here, which we uh, just opened uh, in July, uh, 39 units. Um, we have a wait list here of 132 people in that building that's filled there right now, 132 people. And, and I think that what people have to understand, that's in Sherwood at the roundabout. Next to Leon's. Yeah, yeah. by yeah. the roundabout. So it's next to Leon's. It has underground parking. It's a, it's a very high-end building. We have 132 people on that wait list. And on that wait list, a good percentage of those people are living in accommodations they're not happy with. Some of them are telling me they're in units that are eight or $900 that they're not happy with. And, Pardon me? Uh, $2,100 a month. Uh, Terry, is it uh, 2100 Yeah, 2100 and we have 132 people waiting for it. And during the pandemic, uh, we went over budget in this building one by $1.1 million. And our original uh, mortgage uh, offer was 2.8%. And when we closed in the building, our mortgage uh, was 4.5, and to buy it down to 4.5, we had to pay $400,000 up front. The cost to finance this building over the 25 years is an extra million dollars in the interest rates. And the Porthouse project, the one we're talking about, from the original scheme that we proposed to do in 21 to today, is in the millions of dollars on carrying costs and in capital cost of building the building. Yeah. And uh, in this building today, on the left-hand side, see that gentleman that's sleeping there? He found his way into the building and those guys up in the top right-hand corner. Now this over in Sherwood, okay? And we're experiencing the same thing at our mall in Charlottetown at Royalty Crossing. It's, 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 you know, it's an issue. Yeah. And the, how to fix, this is the parking lot at the current Paula Clinic on some days. Mr. Banks, yep. could we just stick with the porthouse? I'll, I'll tell you why. Yep. We do have Bill uh, Saul and, uh, and group from... Uh, do you want to hear about housing, sir? Yeah, I do. I, I okay. do. It's just and what I'm trying to tell you I'm is just, that if you build more housing downtown yep. and you get more residents downtown, and you get more eyes in the ground and more investment in the ground. People look after their properties and they'll do a good job of it. And, you know, this is a significant infill project on for Charlottetown. And all the issues that somebody wants to talk about, the setbacks and the, the infill and all that, the only difference between the application that was made in 220 and today is more units and two stories higher. And the issue with the step back to, to redesign the building, you lose units, your, your elevator whole design of the building has to change because the elevator issue is in that corridor where he wants to step the building back. And it's an $800,000 cost and the project will never be developed if that's part of the requirement on our part to have to step it back. We've already stepped it back. And prior to this building being uh, considered, we had engaged Brian Gillis, who had left our agency, who practiced with us for a number of years as an architect, who was on the uh, Heritage, board, Heritage Canada board, had great insight into what should be done to this property, he gave us the guidelines on our design. And that was reinforced by uh, the architect um, fellows who did the original design review. Okay. Anyway, uh, in closing, you, there's sir. a letter that the city of Charlottetown uh, City of Summerside, City of Stratford, the um, Federation of Municipalities submitted to the province to ask about speeding up projects and ways of doing that. We've endorsed it. Uh, this is a 
great project to endorse. Mr. Banks, I know the area very well. Lived in the area, grew up in the area. That was the old uh, Clark Street, Red Onion, Green Onion building that was there. And that empty parking lot's been there for a lot of years. I was supportive of the development back in 2020. And uh, I'm great to, very thankful that you're back at the uh, at council to ask again. Um, could I just ask Laurel, Laurel, what, what's the height of the... The system home has brain? detected just that a few second. lines are still connected to the conference and will attempt to disconnect them. If you wish to remain in the conference, please press star 1. 15. Okay. Councillor Duran, you're still there? Councillor Duran? Okay. Laurel, is it, do you know what the height is of the Holman Grant? Is it 10 stories? Still here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, there's no setback in the Holman Grant. Uh, Your Worship, the Holman Grand was built prior to no. um, these regulations. Um, the Holman Grand is, um, I believe it is set step back though, um, but it isn't with the angular plane um, that's also, that's required in the bylaw now. The Holman Grand is also located in a different zone. It's in the downtown core zone, which does allow for additional height. Um, this particular project is in the downtown mixed-use neighborhood zone, which is a mix of um, commercial and residential. Okay. Okay, Councillor Rams and then Councillor Matard. Thank you for your uh, your report, Tim. And you know, like as I said, I when I was around in 2020, <coughs> I thought it was already approved, and then when it came by again, uh, you said there's going to be 38 affordable units in there. 32 affordable. Okay, 32, I'm sorry. Yep. And I know it's hard for you to sort of surmise, but any price in them right now per Under month? Under $1,000 per unit. Okay, thank you very much. Council Matard, and then we'll just go right to the public. Council Matard. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Banks, for your presentation. Um, being new to council, I'm trying to kind of understand the uh, application here and moving forward to you gave a good overview of kind of where you were back in 2020 and where you are today and I think your last parting words were the only difference today is two stories higher and more units. Um, so to me I asked the question is that the motivating factor is more units uh, as opposed to it, just going it, with it, what was there and it, move forward. The apartment business is all about economics so you got to get a return on your investment. Um, at 84 units, uh, when the interest rates were 2% with CMHC, and today they're you know, 5%, and the capital cost of construction has gone up 20% during that period, then the economics are completely different. different. And in order to make it work, we've spent a lot of time on the redesign of the project. Thank but you. We, we've not changed the envelope. No. Well, okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Banks, we're just going to open it to the public. Uh, you can sit there. I know you've got a seat there. Can, again, just remind anyone that comes to the mic, just give your name, where you're from, and uh, you have five minutes to make a presentation. Uh, CAO Eleanor, it's, it's only once to the mic. Is that what it is? Can, can you just clarify that in the public record? Thank you. Uh, you're at five minutes and one turn at the microphone. Okay. Just, uh, Andrew, can you just give your name, your, uh, where you live, and just please speak into that mic. Yes, your worship and council, thank you very much. Can everyone hear me in the back? Excellent. All right, so thank you everyone for the opportunity to comment this evening. I am a resident that... You have to give your name oh, for the Andrea project. Andrea Battison, Charlottetown. Thank you. I am a resident that lives within 100 meters of this building. I'd like to advise Council and Planning Board that most of us just received our letters yesterday, so I expect you'll probably be getting some comments, hopefully by tomorrow at noon or as late submissions. And most people I spoke to in the neighborhood did not see the piece of paper on a three-foot stake beside the mailbox announcing the development and asking for comments. Um, I'll notice that the submission, I would like to make some comments and then finish with some questions. So 
the submission that was put into the planning board that was not presented tonight, but is part of the public record, mentioned a lot of tall buildings like the Holman Grand and the BDC building, which are in the downtown core zone, and so their height is appropriate for that zone, which means putting taller buildings in downtown mixed use neighborhood zones sets a precedent for putting tall buildings in the places where they are not designed for. Uh, there is a building built in the 60s or 70s that was well before the new zoning bylaws. Civic buildings are different and they get different privileges and heritage resources are also different. Uh, the pro submission shows that there's little, little cohesiveness in the area of the architecture. However, this submission does not include the Zion Church, the grounds of St. Paul's Church, or the historical streetscape, which is a key civic frontage on the east side of Prince Street. Um, and this building is half a block away. If I'm allowed, uh, we've also done an artistic rendition of the property. I could submit it for sharing, which is this view of that building from Prince Street from a Critchell Harris drawing. Um, I'll also note that none of the drawings, every drawing in the submission is marked as not to scale or they are prospective artist renderings. It would have been made it much easier if scale drawings had been included in the submission so people could get a better idea what was going on. I also noticed that Mr. Fellows or sorry, Mr. Banks made numerous references to Mr. Fellows, who was the first architect. And as this council is aware, Mr. Fellows was not actually qualified as a design reviewer at the time because he was retired when he did the review. The current design is now an eight-story building, and so there is a new design reviewer who has made appropriate comments for an eight-story building. The previous building was six stories. Mr. Banks also commented about needing eyes on the ground. I'd like to point out that most of the first two stories on this building are parkade or commercial. There are no eyes on the ground on a public streetscape. Um, yep. And the planning board submission, they are, it doesn't appear to be that they are new floor plans. They are stamped and look identical to the 2020 floor plans. And there isn't even an elevation that shows eight stories for Clark Street. Um, as repeated often by city and staff council members, city has a plan for progressively decreasing density. Can I see my time, please? It's a mystery. How much left? Three minutes. Okay. So we have a progressively decreasing from the downtown core, an 88 story, an 88 foot building fits in the downtown core, which has a maximum bonus height of 106 feet whereas it's 60.7 feet in my neighborhood. Um, the images shown by Mr. Banks, the site plan view, clearly shows that there are two, uh, there are three public safety concerns. There are two dead, end, dead ends mid-block, so you can't see anything from anywhere. And Clark Street is also a long, narrow passageway with no escape for the entire block and also creates a potential safety hazard for the people and businesses living north on Clark Street. I've lived in a lot of apartment blocks and there's usually a defined service area in those buildings and uh, with service elevators and places for service vehicles to park so they don't obstruct and inhibit the neighborhood foot traffic or pedestrian traffic. I couldn't see that, maybe Mr. Banks could elaborate. I'm not quite sure how garbage collection is going to work. There's a garbage room on the second floor um, that has a single door opening to Clark Street. My questions are, what public benefit is being proposed by Mr. Banks to get the bonus height? Uh, sustain, subsidized units are different from affordable units. Will there be any guarantee or will these numbers of units disappear over time as previously? Um, has stratification for parking been considered under Clark Street? And this is a new development in the 500 lots area. Lately, we've heard lots of references in the media about the importance of the 500 lot heritage area. The design reviewer indicated they reviewed the heritage preservation bylaw. Definition in 9.6 says designate, designated, or designation 
refers to all those heritage resources that were designated prior to the adoption of the 2018 zoning and preservation bylaw. So my question to council, will this project require heritage permit and heritage board oversight and before building permits and the design can be approved? Okay. That's the list of questions you have? That's the list of questions. Did Tried you get them do down, nice Mr. Banks? If we have time on the diagrams, I can show you the areas I was meaning. Okay. okay, Mr. Banks. Um, that's why I asked if you um, please. Uh, there's two decisions that were made on the previous um, Iraq appeal. Um, so the city had uh, two lawyers there for three days at one time and three lawyers there for another day at another time. And then they had all their preamble that they have to do to, to do this appeal. And I've heard nothing new from the lady that was up here. All the same issues uh, were already dealt with at Iraq. Uh, they're public record. People can go into the Iraq and look at the appeals. They can read through and they can see that these issues that she's speaking about, Clark Street and all that stuff, uh, in addition to the legal expense that the city had to pay on this frivolous appeal, uh, they had to have three staff members there the whole time. So um, your director of planning was there th through the whole thing. The planner who was involved in the project was there the whole time. Uh, Adam Scott, your municipal guy, was there the whole time. And these appeals are costing the city a lot of money. There's nothing new in this project. Absolutely nothing new, except going two, two stories higher. And anyway, the garbage, the Clark Street view, all that kind of stuff didn't mean a thing to Iraq at the end of the day. We answered all the questions and we had appropriate design. Thank you. Laurel, were you a part of that uh, defense team? Yes, Your Worship, I was in the appeal. So what was just stated and what was asked, were the issues all addressed in the appeal? Um, I believe Iraq's ruling was in favor of the, um, the city um, approving the application. It was, yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Um, I, I have a question for Tim. Uh, Tim, you're referencing the. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you told me to go. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. Oh. Um, <clears throat> I want to go back to your uh, the 45 degree angular setback and the number of units lost. Did I hear you correctly saying there would be 28 units out of the, so the 156? No, I, I was talking about if it, if it went to the new design, re re uh, design reviewer wanted to go to six stories. Well, he, he, he proposed two options. He said either six yeah. stories fully across. Yeah, so when, when I spoke to you about it, I said that you would lose X number of units if you went to the six stories and extended it out to Hillsborough Street. So can you refresh me on those numbers? Because I don't remember uh, 20, the numbers. I think it's 28 units that get, get lost if you go to the six stories. But then you come up against the issue of the streetscape on Hillsborough Street. Correct. And you have the sausage or hot dog kind of look on the long look of the building. So going the six stories from Prince Street over to Hillsborough Street would yep. result in the building going from 156 units to 124 units? Uh, 156 roughly. minus yep. 28? Whatever it is, yeah. Okay. And, and you, it's easy to figure that out. All you have to do is the massing of it. Okay. If you take the square footage by scale, uh, just you lose that 
number of units. Okay, and if you go with so the I, I think in the back end on on the two extra stories give us gives us roughly fifty four new units, like in in that section and the scaling down of the units. And when you add on on six stories to the back, you only can put twenty four units. I don't. I'd have to go through the, uh, the drawings to show you, but. Okay, and if it goes to the, uh, the other opposition was on the going date stories with the 45 No, that, that's not an option. You may think it's an option, but we're not building the building if we have to step I'm it back. I'm not saying what was my option. I'm oh. saying what the design reviewer put as options. Yeah. I did not write this report. No, I know. I realize that. Yeah. Well, don't say that I wrote that. I, I didn't put say. I, I'm just saying to you. The other option that was presented was yeah, that. that. That's presented by the design reviewer. Right. Yep. Yeah. But if look, look. So that's all. I'm just trying to find out. You were you were talking about you if it goes back and forth. Yeah. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is there's no option. We're not going to six stories out to Hillsborough Street because the economics doesn't make sense, and we're not stepping back to building the two floors. You guys go ahead and vote against it. It won't be built. Leave the parking lot the way it is. And if you if you, if you just don't understand that, that's the bottom line. The owner is somewhere here. Can you stand up and tell them what you told me? Okay. Anyway, I'm just letting you know. Okay. 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 So I just want to go back to the public. Um, yep. Yeah, please. Just turn off your mic there, Councillor Beck. Hi, my name is Sandra Doherty. I live in Charlottetown. I'm very glad to hear that there will be affordable units in this new building if it's built. Um, I want to uh, I, I piggyback a bit on Andrea's question about when a unit is, is um, deemed to be affordable, for how long does that designation last? 25 years, okay, thank you for answering. My second question is about aesthetics. I'm wondering what the heat source is for these units. The heat source? Yes, will it be heat pumps? Uh, not necessarily. No, my question, my reason for asking that is I've noticed some buildings that have been built lately where the heat pumps pumps are pace, placed wherever and it, I know aesthetics seem to be important in this building and, and I'm wondering if they would be, if there are heat pumps where they would be placed so it would, uh, wouldn't detract from the beauty of the building if it's built. Just, just thanks, just want to use the mic. Okay. It has to be on public record. Yes, uh, I'm not sure about what mechanical system we'll be using other than it's going to be a high-end building. It'll have uh, heat and air conditioning and the mechanical units will be screened of uh, similar to uh, what we did out at the building at uh, uh, in Sherwood, at the roundabout. At the Pearl. Okay. Mr. Morris, did you want to say something? Oh, just in the meantime, could you speak to it, Laura? Laurel? I just, uh, you worship, um, I just had a couple comments about um, the comments about the design reviewer from Mr. Banks. Um, just to be clear, the design reviewer reviewed the building as per the bylaw, and the bylaw requires a 45 degree step back on the angular plane. Um, the previous request that the previous design reviewer reviewed was for a six story building, which was allowed to go to six story through bonus height. This current request is to exceed bonus height by two stories. So there's a site specific amendment in place. Mr. Um, Munn um, recommended the set step back, but he also provided the option in his review that the applicant could apply for a variance to, to exempt that step back on the 45 degree angular plane. So he's done his review as per the bylaw, and he could not exempt that through his review, that is not his role as a design reviewer. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel, for your expert opinion. Mr. Morris, grab the mic there, Mr. Morris. Just give your name and... Yeah. Um, my name is Pat Morris, Charlottetown. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> I believe... I believe the original application to him was it December of 2020. Is that, am I right in that? So I know a lot of you weren't here 
the CAO was a different CAO at the time, and uh, so half the council is different. So uh, the capital cost of the project in 2020 um, for 84 units was uh, $24 million. <clears throat> at interest rate of, uh, you know, I want to say 3%, probably two and three quarters percent, 3%. <clears throat> By the time when it went through this process last time, we had this meeting, and there was nobody that stood up at the meeting that objected to anything uh, that was submitted at that time. <clears throat> In the meantime, there's one person. So one person that gets to object to Iraq. <clears throat> Tim's already gone through what's involved in that and the timeline. <clears throat> so we finally get a decision from Iraq. <clears throat> and the one thing Tim didn't say, which that's fine, I understand, he doesn't want to ruffle a whole lot of feathers here this evening, is that <clears throat> it then took us a year to get a development permit from the council and the CAO. And this administration. The project, the same project, went from $24 million to $30 million. Something like Simmons. And the interest rate went from two and a half, two and three quarters, three, I don't know, I can't recall exactly, to today it's at, I don't know, 5%, four and three quarter percent. So I don't know, you know, I'm <clears throat> 2% and $30 million over I don't know, 10 years, $600,000 a year times 10 years is $6 million. The people that were here before should be ashamed of themselves. It took a year even from that point from the approval of the IROC agreement to get a development permit. A year. Because the council, the CAO at the time, whoever's involved behind the scenes, I don't have an understanding, can't interpret their own legislation, their bylaws, in terms of definition of affordability and what it means and how it affects the tax roll on the building. So to Tim's point, you guys will do whatever you want, OK? And I, and I personally, personally don't care, <laughs> personally. You know, it's a good project and it'll make sense. But I can't even, I, what it takes to go through this, and you have a housing issue that is only getting exponentially worse, and the hoops that people have to jump through, why in God's name would you even bother with it? So the only people that would bother with it are REITs. And why do REITs do it? Because they're public traded companies. And they're the only people that have enough capital to be able to pull the stuff off. And what happens is we chase them away too. I'm not saying council did the council. I'm not suggesting that. Between the province and everything else, with the steps that they put in place, it's insane. But I don't hear a voice. I don't hear a voice for what you're doing, like for the people in the downtown core. I don't know why anybody does this job. Then what is it? Is it? I don't get it. Right? Like I don't get it. So, anyways. The project goes up six, seven million dollars. So the reason we're back here tonight is because Tim and his team had downsized the units because the cost per door to build them on the smaller units is the same cost as it was three years ago on the bigger units. So you need to get more rents in order to offset the cost of the project. And I love when they say, I love when I'm not a developer, right? I just like, I just like, whatever. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I don't even know why I'm here. I don't want to be here. I don't need to be here. But here's the thing. What, what I, what, the return that people are getting on their capital on a project like this, and I know people want to say oh, that's, that's not true. It's 4%, 4 and 5%. That's the return. And you know, in this, this is just like, I don't know, it's a definition of insanity, right? So I, I, I doing the same thing over and over again. I, so anyways, whatever you decide, we're not changing anything. Like nothing, 
Like absolutely nothing. Yep. So do the project, don't do the project. It's up to you guys. Okay. I, don't, I don't really care. But three years, like I don't know what you need to do. I don't know what you need to change. Because, but your job here is to facilitate the ability for people, for the love of God, for people who have businesses in the downtown core. You know, my wife's had a business for 25 years in the downtown core. All kinds of people do. You need to bring people here. You need to bring people here. I, you know, for those people. Otherwise, what's the, yeah. Anyways, whatever. It is what it is. I just, I think you just, but, but, so the reason why we're here tonight to go from six stories to eight stories is that it doesn't make sense at six stories because the cost to build it has changed and it's a new world. And it's a new world. Yep. Good. Thanks for your time. And Patrick, just again, the, the, the IRAC held it up for what, Tim, 18 months? Yeah, and you held it up no, for no, a no, year. No, no, just one second. No, no, no just one second. Hold on a second. No, no, no. You held it up for a year, and you were directly involved no, in that. No, I was not. You were directly no, no. involved because in that. I, I had conversations no, no. with you. That's all right. No, it's not okay. No. Hold on a sec. No. no hold I, on a sec. I want You're to keep... You're 100% right. It was tied up in Iraq for 18 months, and it took you guys a year to get a development permit. Because and we, the reason it got a development permit, yes. we told you, we told you how it was defined within your act. You then went and got a legal opinion because you couldn't interpret your own act. No, no, no. I, uh, Mr. Morris, I can Pat, tell you, you call me Pat. My, he's yeah, dead. I can, I you can, can tell you Pat. this much you that I ahead. wanted to keep the original policy for the affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. We you personally tied it Yes, up. I did. Too. Absolutely. The yeah. development agreement. Yeah. And took another year. Yeah. And that I, another I personally and that would add $3 million, $4 million. Absolutely. absolutely. Can I call a point yes, of order for this meeting you. at this Thank time? You. We Thank you. We're moving on. Thank yeah, you. we are. Thank you. Because I know what I did. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Morris. Okay, we're opening up the mic, please. Um, I'd just like to say a few words. Look, we're, we're the people in the middle here trying to make it happen, and we invest our own money. Uh, like I said, we did... Uh, 296 units. It's not an easy job, and this gentleman behind me has the wherewithal and to, to do this project. He's committed. His partners are committed, and he's frustrated. And there, the sense of frustration is that you know frivolous appeals start, and we want to get in the ground. And you can say what you want to say. The process here. Like, we submitted our application 15 weeks ago to get one public meeting. Right. 15 weeks ago to get here to the meeting. 15 weeks. It should be like a week. <laughs> you know. yeah. And then, then to be told in the public that didn't think they were going to be able to find accommodations yeah. to have the meeting before Christmas. Yeah. Okay. But again, Mr. Mr. Banks, I can say that uh, the issue over the affordable housing tax incentive was something that I wanted to keep with the original 2018 definition. Any other questions? Councilor McClure, did you have a question or did you have a comment? No, I just was just uh, more curious, Tim. Um, I'm assuming the poly clinic as it sits, <laughs> it's not going to be kind of blown up, is it? Or is it a tear down or a retrofit or? No, he's invested about $4 million renovating it inside um, and brought all new tenants to the building, uh, put new security in the building. And uh, to, to go to the point of the new design reviewer suggesting to, build a, to bring the building down to Hillsborough Street would have blocked off all the office view planes in the existing building. So it was one of the reasons that the, the building was brought back. The, the design reviewer, the new design reviewer, who by the way is a, a single practice architect, uh, and in his report he wants to put heritage windows in the building as part of his recommendation. He doesn't want, you know, the nouveau, what people want in their units. He want, he's recommending, uh, you can see it in the report, even draws he even draws them out for us. He want, <laughs> it, it's almost comical. It, it, it is actually comical. Yeah. 
It's an embarrassment that you bring forward a, a, a contemporary project for an infill to put 158 units in. We got some guy writing a report, and he wants us to put heritage windows in a building. It, it's almost comical. Okay. Thank you. Councilor McKenna, did you have a question or comment? Councilor Beck, you're good. Okay, thank you, Mr. Banks. Thank you, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Rosno, and uh, thank Mr. Moore is there too. So I think our next application is 115 Deacon Lane or 115 Murchison Lane. And I have Laurel Palmer Thompson presenting. And from the province, do we have Wayne Walker here? Laurel? Apologize, Your Worship. I had to get the um, pointer. Mr. Banks left it on the podium. Um, no, Mr. Wayne Walker is not here. Um, Bill Saul is here to present on behalf of the province and Sable Arc. One fifteen Deacon Lane, which is the uh, Bill. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mental health acute care campus. Yeah, Bell, I wouldn't use that. Use the other one. Thank you. Make sure it's on. I know you don't have a full audience. City one first, please, Jason. Yeah. I just. Um... Your Honor. Good. And Wayne Wayne Walker is here with you too. Just go to the first slide, please, Jason. Thank you, Your Worship. This is an application for, let me flip, 115 Deacon Grove Lane and Murchison Lane, PID numbers 425892 and 691162. Um, the request is to amend the approved development concept plan for the parcels identified. Um, the current development concept plan was approved for the subject property by resolution of council on September 14th, 2020. Requirements outlined in the Zoning and Development Bylaw for changes to a development concept plan requires that any um, changes or amendments um, have to proceed to public consultation, and that's why we're here tonight. Um, these are the sections of the bylaw that outline those requirements, section 41.2.7 and 41.2.8. So property details, um, the subject properties are approximately 33 hectares, 81.5 acres in combined size, and they have a frontage along Murchison Lane, Prom Acadian Drive, and Deacon Grove Lane. To the north of the subject properties are lands owned by the French School Language Board that are within the institutional zone, and to the east and south of the subject property are the Hillsborough River, and to the west are lands within the institutional zone that contain the Queen Elizabeth II Hospital. <clears throat> So details of the request, specifically the request is to allow for the development of acute, an acute care and social housing facilities. The amendments are related to the siting of the buildings and location of parking facilities. The proposed changes mainly include rotating both buildings three, social housing, and building four, acute care center, to provide unencumbered views for patients in the Hillsborough River to the south and east. There is also a proposal to move the parking area as shown on the original concept plan to the eastern side of Deacon Grove Lane. The original concept plan proposed the parking facility for acute care facility to be located on the water facing side of the building and the current placement will result in pac patients views of the water being unobstructed by a parking lot. The revised proposal moves parking away from the hospital site. <clears throat> so outcomes of the proposed amendment, the amendment changes the placement of the hospital so, so that it's oriented with the facade of the building facing the water. Um, reorient, reorienting the hospital and moving the parking will allow patients and staff to ha have an uninterrupted uninter view of the water. Parking and loading bays have been relocated to the side of the building 
where they're less visible and relocation of the parking lot to the east side of Deacon Grove Lane will result in the removal of building G as shown on the original development concept plan. So legislative requirements um, in accordance with section 3.10 amendments to the bylaw and rezoning of the zoning and development bylaw on November 13th, 2023, city council approved the request to proceed to public consultation. On November 20th, um, written notification was sent to property owners located within 100 meters of the subject property. In total, 37 letters were sent to residents advising them of the public meeting and they requested, requested their written comments. And to date, um, we have not received any responses to the notification letter. Um, I'll tilt, turn the presentation now over to Bill Saul from Sable Arc Studios. And Laura Lee, I just want to also note that Wayne Walker is here from the province, correct, Wayne? Oh, Wayne is sorry. Yeah, I no, he just arrived. See. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and thank you, Council, for hearing on the CDA amendment that we've been pushing with the city and working with Laurel on just to, um, to get this very, very important project moving ahead and getting the mental health um, and well-being health um, firmly established in, inside of this, this mental health campus that's been set up a number of years ago. Um, as you can see, this is the original layout. Um, uh, two buildings already developed, at, uh, what are social structured housing, lacy and structured as we call them, currently developed. Um, there is the proposed uh, mental health and addictions facility, and then the acute care hospital, as you see here. The original plan had proposed a, a parking lot area to the one side, uh, which uh, when we started developing and looking at very tightly and very closely at the, the layouts and, and how, how this building would facilitate views and take advantage of these views to the Hillsborough River, we really felt through our clinical team interactions that this parking lot was, was really in the way. And to facilitate a, a much more friendly green space parkland setting, um, the progress and the movement of this meant let's move that parking to the north side and across uh, the Deacon Grove Lane, as you see here. So that, that constitutes the major change that, that was cited for the CDA amendment that we're here for to, to, to move forward. Um, rotation of the buildings has also been slightly um, performed here in the providing again more views out towards the Hillsborough River, setting up a context for a courtyard and viewing corridors from where patient bedrooms are on the south side of this building. Likewise, there are patient um, bedrooms alongside in the mental health and addictions housing facility in this longer wing. This rotation has then facilitated a nice plaza community area right to the front in a drop-off zone, handicap parking, um, right to the front, to the immediate front areas um, of the two buildings. Um, we worked quite extensively with clinical staff um, and with, with other people that have talked about um, their experience inside of these facilities. And it was felt strongly that having a frontage parking zone to see people come and go was very appropriate for this facility. In effect, a front door with parking across the street. One more development was also uh, the siting of loading bays and a um, delivery zone to the rear of the property such that when um, it minimizes traffic flows and other interruptions that would be to the front of the facility, and then we liberate, once the demolition of the existing hospital is done, this whole area for green space. In a bit more detail here, you're seeing, let's push this, you're seeing a detail of the layouts of these, um, really front of house public access zones, there'll be a Public access cafe, for instance, inside the front part of this building. 
And again, this is to break down the, the barriers and the stigmatization of mental health, have more community access and awareness. So that's, that's the design inside of that space. We also have day program areas within both buildings, but another one within the mental health area. You're seeing courtyards that are to the rear. And again, they take advantage of those views to the south. There's energy strategy objectives, uh, setting up the building to, to set itself up for a net zero ready um, point of view, so all electric uh, power systems, geothermal heating. You're seeing here just a, a large um, setting of both buildings in one go. Um, this is more detailed segment of the uh, plan view of what the ACLS building is going to look like and some perspectives from the street. Um, landscape, uh, richly landscape uh, frontage, creating this urban plaza to the front where the street is a bit step, or where the building is slightly rotated away from that alignment to the street. Arrival zones, uh, use of, of some interesting materials that are nice and durable, natural finishes. and then back and around the building. I'm just giving you snapshots to give a feel for the building to let you understand what it's about. Some interesting lobby areas. And then we get into our other building. Again, set back away from the building for those, those arrival zones and the separation from, from the, uh, the street frontage itself. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Bill. Councillor Twill. Uh, Councilor Twilger, can, can I just ask any questions out there in the gallery? Wayne, did you want to add anything? Are you all right with? It was good. Councilor Twil. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I appreciate it. Um, we were given a presentation two and three years ago about the uh, campus at the Queen Elizabeth campus. And it was a pretty, uh, I thought it was a pretty intriguing uh, presentation. Uh, I was disappointed that it didn't go anywhere, you know, two and three years later. My first question is this, when you compare and contrast this conceptual design versus the one that was showcased to City Council three years ago at the Rod Royal Inn, could you please outline the differences? Let me go back. This is getting me backwards. The differences are really very minimal. What you had seen then was a high, high level comprehensive master plan, which notes these areas to the frontage of Deacon Grove Lane. Those are future development zones notated there as future development. What you're seeing here is that ACLS, um, the acute care hospital, just fronting the street, and this one fronting the street. The different difference then is these are slightly rotated and set back. Parking has been shifted up to, across the road. That's effectively the the difference in plan. Okay. Um, my second question is. When you illustrate these these buildings and the amenities that go with it, we talk about mental health and addictions. That's it's probably one of the most important topics in our city and in this province, because um, quite frankly, they're not getting the service and and, and getting the help that uh, you know the less fortunate uh, rightly deserve. What what they're getting to my mind, it's not even a Band-Aid. And I know this has got nothing to do with you, but maybe the gentleman in the back can address it. Um, I don't think <coughs> right now there's a more important issue for, for a, a facility of this magnitude or a conceptual design of this campus to move forward. My question is, and I did say three years ago we had a presentation given to council. Council supported it, right? How serious is the provincial government in terms of moving this project forward? 
or is this just another smoke and mirrors event? Uh, I have to. Ask, I got to ask that question. I, I, I know, but but so just, so I'd I'd, yeah. I'd like to get an answer yeah. in terms of, you know, is there an urgency here, or is this to placate to people to say, oh, here's something we're looking mm -hmm. at? Bill, I'll give you Bill? a very brief answer. Yeah. Pardon me. Very seriously looking forward to this building. This project is moving towards a tender very soon in the next few months. And we're looking at breaking ground in the next in the spring. Wayne, do you want to add to that? Yeah, and I don't I'd like to get an answer to that. And again, uh, I know Bill and Wayne have been calling me to try to get this on the agenda. So uh, Wayne has already had a presentation. Wayne out at Hillsborough Hall. Correct. I think it's forty to sixty people out there. Correct. Yeah. Yes, so it it's it's moving ahead. Anyways, yeah. so I, I'd like to hear. yeah, no, I he's he's going to just one. Let. Hey, <laughs> Councillor Twill, yeah. he's going to. Okay. Councillor Twill, so uh, Wayne The system Watkins, has you... detected that a few lines are still connected to the conference Just hold up, Wayne. and will attempt to disconnect them. If you wish to remain in the conference, please press star one. Fifteen. Okay. Councillor Toronto, are you still there? Councillor Duran? Yeah, still here. Thank you. Um, I'm Wayne Walker, so I'm the Executive Director of Mental Health and Addictions and Capital Planning. Under the Capital Planning, uh, Councillor Twill, there is nine capital projects. So we have a community-first approach, which has been the exact same philosophy we had when we were presented to you the very first time. The, the premise of the project, the capital, was the acute care hospital had to go last. There, or it would have been 150 beds inside of that facility. We are just about lacy and structured, as Bill had said, is now open and is functioning for Health PI. ED short stay unit is going to be transitioned over to Health PI in about two to three weeks. Um, there we're working with the child and youth uh, project, which is going inside of the current unit nine space in about uh, a year's time. These two buildings, as Bill had alluded to, the acute care life skills center and the mental health addictions wellness center, they're out for pre-qualification right now, we're doing evaluations on GCs currently as I speak. And the plan is to go forth and have this tendered in, I'd like to do it in forecasting end of March. So mobilizing a GC. March, 2024. Follow up there, Council Twill? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, I was gonna ask for timelines and um, not to doubt what you're saying, but in terms of those timelines and time frames, that's reasonable and realistic. That's correct. So that we're going to move forward. And the other question is, have, was it in the capital pro projects uh, that was tendered in the legislature last week, the monies for this project? Um, it's, it's a carry-on. So it's a five-year five capital plan that's been since COVID. We lost a year, so it's, it's six, over a little, little, little over six years now. Carry forward. So, okay, but well, yeah. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to it. Oh, thank you. So we, we're all looking forward. And thank you, Wayne and Bill. Thank you very much. Hopefully, Laura will have something moving to council by December, and then they can move forward with the project. Okay, no other questions? Motion to move to adjournment. Motion moved. Second by Councilor Beck. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you.